everyone. I'm Han Rui Zhang. I'm an assistant professor at Columbia University. I'm also the technical editor of the ATVB journal and a member of the ATVB digital strategy team. The team leveraged digital strategy methods to promote the journal and uh, the community. Uh, today, it's my great pleasure to interview Dr. Luisa Iluela Arispe. Uh, Dr. Uh, Arispe is a professor at the Northwestern University. She's also the chair of the Department of Cell and Developmental Biology. She just gave a plenary speaker at the ATVB Journal Highlights session. It was such an inspiring and wonderful talk. So today I would like to take this opportunity to uh, ask her to talk about her career, her science, uh, her uh, scientific discovery, and also to share her insights about mentor-mentee relationship. So uh, hi, Luisa. Hi, it was so great to uh, get to interview you. I'm very excited to be here. Thank you so much for the opportunity and for uh, this time together. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I uh, would like to see if you may share a little bit about the main research area, about your lab, and then your career, and just whatever you would like the audience to hear. So yeah, for the last 30 years, we've been working on the molecular regulation of angiogenesis. We're trying to understand what are the basic growth factors, receptors, and overall regulators that control the formation of new blood vessels. So that work actually took us to pathological uh, settings, but also trying to understand how the entire uh, circuitry of signaling pathways are um, coordinated to organize a well-balanced network. Obviously, that research also took us into pathology, so we became very interested in vascular malformations, and we became very interested in understanding how we can use those tools that we uh, learn in basic developmental biology to now apply them in situations of disease. And so more recently, we became uh, fascinated by the fact that uh, endothelial cells are very capable of proliferating in situ, and that is what I showed uh, today, and also uh, we became fascinated by trying to understand how blood vessels repair themselves. And so we know very little about the repair of arteries in cases of injury, and that has been the focus of our research, one of the aspects of our research for the last uh, five years or so. Yeah, that was really amazing when you were showing the images in your talk and that the large arteries actually repair themselves through different mechanisms and they also like expand through different mechanisms uh, postnatally compared with other type of blood vessels. Was dilatory OCD driven research a surprise funding from the very beginning? And how this whole story was even started at the very beginning? Yeah, I think what really triggered our curiosity on this was trying to understand how after blood vessels are formed, right, um, they need to expand in mm. length and width. And how does that happen? Yeah. What, what, are the, what are the processes by which endothelial cells can uh, enable themselves to proliferate in the context of high flow? And so trying to understand initially how can they retain their position. Normally, we, we learn that when cells proliferate, they, they round up right. and they let go of their contacts. That mm -hmm. is, seems to be a requirement. So if that were to be the case in, the, uh, in a vessel like the aorta with a very high shear stress, they would have blown over, but, yeah, but they exactly. don't. And mm -hmm. in fact, they actually retain their contacts. And so that, that became um, really the initial uh, spark mm. that drove us into that area. And then trying to, to uh, you know, devise a situation by which we could injure the aorta and try to see how that injury gets repair over time. That's incredibly mm. important in the settings where you have a stents, uh, where you really damage the tunica intima, and that area needs to be repaired. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, you have uh, an occlusion very rapidly. Yeah, exactly. Or do you think it's safe to say that it is that hemodynamic force, either during homeostasis, during growth, or during injury, actually mold the entire system to remodel as the way it is? So. Yeah, I mean, clearly, I think the evolution has enabled or endowed endothelial cells to adapt to mm -hmm. that hemodynamics and all those forces. I think they, 
they very rapidly uh, are enticed to actually polarize themselves, right. elongate, align in response to flow. That's really exciting. So where do you see this project is hiding toward? Well, I think, I think uh, yeah, it's, it's a very interesting question. Mm -hmm. I'm very excited about this result right. because I think that there's a lot that we don't understand about endothelial injury. Um, when, um, when the heart gets, uh, gets damaged, we have a way as physicians to identify circulating biomarkers mm -hmm. to, as a sign recognize of, it. right, to yeah. recognize that. Same thing with the liver. We don't have an endothelial marker or biomarker that can inform us as to the degree right. of endothelial injury and the ability of that endothelium to regenerate mm -hmm. or uh, regrow. So I think it's, it's, uh, this is where probably we're going. We're trying to understand how we can identify markers that can inform us as to the status of the health of the endothelium. And what are the situations in which there is um, you know, proliferative resilience and what are the confounding factors that might affect that proliferative resilience and repair over time? That's really exciting to hear. Looking forward to the next few years to come, and then we're going to hear the stories develop, being developed in the next phase in your laboratory. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm excited as well. Okay. Uh, Dr. Liz P has received a multiple mentorship award. She has been a true leader in the field, uh, in the community. So uh, I actually would like to ask her to talk a little bit about the mentor-mentee relationship. What makes a great mentor? What makes a great mentee? And what actually makes this relationship like, basically maximize the benefits? Yeah, thank you. I, I really love to mentor. Mm -hmm. as one of the things that gives me great uh, joy. And in fact, that is why I also like to be a departmental chair. I think there's nothing more gratifying than seeing uh, the people that you put together, collaborate and come up with wonderful ideas and make fantastic discoveries. That gives me a tremendous amount of satisfaction. And it's the same thing in the lab, right? Um, when a graduate student runs to my office and tells me, Luisa, I cannot, you cannot believe this. This is unbelievable, this is amazing. Um, that, you know, I just glow. I am just so excited to see them, uh, you know, discover and to experience the thrill of really making something, uh, making a, a fantastic discovery. And so what makes, I think, a, a special mentor-mentee relationship is, is trust and confidence. Um, the mentee needs to entirely, I mean, they are, they are giving us the, um, they are entrusting us with their professional future. And so that trust uh, on both ways is, is absolutely essential. Mm. And, uh, and trying to you know, understand what really makes individuals tick. So in part of the, the mentor is trying to understand, well, where you're going and, and what you want to accomplish and what stimulates that mentee. Mm -hmm. And that answer is different for different mentees. Yeah. Some mentees really love a deadline or tell me by when I need to mm -hmm. do this. And others, if you give them a deadline, they run away. So the approach of the mentor